World War II, staggering, began with horses versus tanks. Six long, bloody years later it ended with men in plane bombs versus... With all that techno know-how, everything began to change. With great power came great irresponsibility. It was the high watermark of modernity. All our problems would have solutions. Vorsprung Dirk Technik and all that. Everyone agreed, if they knew what was good for them. Sputnik shook America's complacency, and they threw money at their problems. Meanwhile, two scientists were predicting that the ocean wasn't going to sponge up all the carbon emissions from human sources. A year later, Charles Keeling starts measuring carbon dioxide levels in the atmosphere, and passenger jets start crossing the Atlantic, and two empires compete over consuming passions. Standing here on a highway, turned into a lake. Born on this planet that I didn't make. The ice caps are melting, you can measure their... Impact science lays down its first marker against production science. And the world holds its breath. Lyndon Johnson gets the top job. And in 1965, he tells Congress about carbon dioxide pollution. Poisoned oceans hear all the lies of the political pundits and corporate crooks, their accountants and scientists cooking the books. And the carbon accumulates, as perceptive historians note. With hardly an inkling of what it's about, wedded to profit and flooded in drought, I'm talking to you from here at the end of the world. Bobby Kennedy runs for president while dissing GDP. He wins California, but fails to get the Democratic nomination. Nixon beats Humphrey, but don't worry, he has a secret plan for ending the war in Vietnam. The species sees where it is, and Earth Day happens just before this. The Clean Air Act gets signed and History keeps on keeping on. I shall resign the presidency effective at noon tomorrow. Vice President Ford will be sworn in as president at that hour in this office. In 1975, the first scientific paper to use the phrase global warming is published. And along comes a president who speaks of limits. Only waste to your country like we've done to ours. Let them eat coffee, sugar, coca, and flowers. I'm talking to you from here at the end of the world. Who is reluctant to directly use US military might, though happy enough to support thugs. And Stephen Schneider nails it. And this is where controversy comes in. The scientific consensus that CO2 will build up and will be a potential problem is very large. But a scientific consensus on precisely how influential it will be in 10 years or 20 years, what areas climates will get better, what areas will get worse, this is where the controversy comes in. So what we're really doing is we're insulting our global environment at a faster rate than we're understanding it. And the best we can do, in all honesty, is say, look out, there's a chance of potentially irreversible change at a global scale based upon the benefits of use of energy and it's very tough for us to know whether those benefits of energy today are worth the potential risks of environmental change for our children. And history keeps on keeping on. Climate change gets its first front page in the New York Times and for a while it looks like history might stop keeping on. In the dark corners in the shadow of the bomb, the science goes on. 
and by the late 1980s, the signal is well and truly emerging from the noise. A Republican wins the 88 election, promising to combat the greenhouse effect with the White House effect. Here in the city, shrouded in smoke, 10 million people this morning. It got so clear that Margaret Thatcher made a speech about it to the United Nations. The following day, however, this happened. A process started with a meeting in Toronto which promised a 20% reduction of carbon emissions on a 1990 baseline by the year 2000. Then in New York in May 1991, the Bush administration arm-twisted everyone away from legal obligations. So. In June 1992, everyone could safely build some more suburbs and buy SUVs, cut down the mountains, burn all the coal. The carbon kept building up, of course, while scientists were getting more certain. In Kyoto, a deal was made for 5% cuts on a 1990 level by 2012, just the developed world, mind you, and it never got as far as the US Senate where it would have been flattened. And of course, Clinton had emissions problems all of his own. I did not have sexual relations with that woman. And the carbon keeps building up, of course. History keeps on keeping on. A contested selection is followed by mass murder, lots of mass murder wrapped up in justifications and excuses. Meanwhile, the Global Climate Coalition shuts up shop. Mission accomplished. The ice caps are melting, you can measure the rise of the poisoned oceans, hear all the lies of the political pundits and corporate crooks, their accountants and scientists cooking the books with hardly an inkling of what it's about. Wedded to profit, in flooded in drought. In 2005, the Millennium Ecosystem Assessment is released, and the Kyoto Protocol finally came into force because the Russians saw an angle. By 2007 comes the strongest message yet. The IPCC's fourth assessment report, actually a quite conservative document. For instance, it kicked sea level rise from melting glaciers into the too hard basket. In December 2007, the climatariat give themselves a two-year deadline. For two years, everyone mouths the pieties, you can't move but for green this and sustainable that. December 2009, Copenhagen, of which the less said, the better. So now, is it all over bar the frying and the gnashing of teeth? Three things seem certain. One, barring a series of technological miracles, carbon dioxide concentrations in the atmosphere will keep on climbing. Two, unless we rescind the laws of physics, the temperature will keep going up. Not steadily, not evenly, but up. Three, that will make life on Earth interesting. Everyone's waiting for us to decide In dust we were born and in dust we reside Will you realize the common sister shepherd and share Here in this war zone called land, water and air I'm talking to you from here at the end of the world